grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and welcome to worship this morning at or at least from Lakeside Presbyterian Church. We're so glad that you're joining us online, whether it's through YouTube, on our website, or Facebook Live, and appreciate that we welcome each other. We welcome you to this space and you welcome us to your screen or to your room or to your feed. With that in mind, we hope you will share this with more feeds, uh, with your own feeds, and spread the word of the ways that we're called together as a congregation to worship weekly. We're called to worship, but we also have a life outside of these nuggets of time on Sunday mornings or whenever you watch us. We just finished, for instance, Compassion Camp, right? I'm coming to you live from the set of Compassion Camp, right? We, uh, we spent a fabulous week working with our young folks uh, of the congregation talking about how to be compassionate uh, to our neighbors, to ourselves, to our world, how to be loved, be kind, be you. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in our children's moment. So stick around for some of the pictures and things from Compassion Camp. But also know that we have a big thank you to give for all those who supported it, especially our Children's Ministry Committee and Gentry Eck, uh, all the folks who helped pull that together for the young people in this congregation. We also are engaging in what we're calling a 21 day challenge. You can start those 21 days at any point, but we invite you to take 21 days to learn uh, and to grow and to engage in questions of justice and racism um, and to engage with each other on that. If you want more ways to engage or learn how to be a part of that, please, um, Check out our website, reach out to Nancy Ross Zimmerman, nancy at lakesidechurch.org, um, or our adult education folks. Reach out to come up with ways to engage um, these important questions for uh, not only our world and nation, but for our life of faith. We hope you will take that opportunity. We also want to lift up the ways that we are connecting to each other um, in different ways these days. For instance, we're starting a pen pal program. We would love you to sign up to be a part of a pen pal team, to exchange letters, good old fashioned drawings and art, things through snail mail with folks who, um, who want to engage with each other in uh, a way beyond a screen these days. We would love to match you up with someone, especially young folks with old folks, any combination like that, please consider reaching out to us to join our pen pal program. You can hear more about that and of course any number of other ministry activities in our weekly news from church. And if you don't get that already, please sign up, uh, log on to our website, let us know. We want to send those emails to you or to send them out to you via snail mail if that's what you need. Uh, please get engaged in that way. But now, we take a moment and we turn to God. In the next video shot, you'll see our liturgist today, Dan Peel, in the sanctuary. And you'll see that uh, our sanctuary is adorned by flowers. Um, these flowers were sent by Bob and Stephanie Lee in honor of their 25th anniversary, but they sent the flowers to Dan and Dan took them to the sanctuary and now they're a part of our worship even when we can't be together physically in the sanctuary. We hope that uh, we can bless each other in that way and um, honor that anniversary milestone that they'd like to honor through these flowers. So with all those gifts in mind, we stop, we ground ourselves in God, and turn to God in worship. Let us worship God. We gather together to worship God, who comes to us when we least expect it, who calls us out of the safety of our ordered lives and invites us to join Christ in the adventure of faith. Let us worship God together.
friends, I invite you now to a time of confession. So I invite you to join your hearts with mine before the Lord. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you know us so well, too well, if we're honest. You know how easy it is for us to come to you and to proclaim loudly of our faith when all is going well. But when the waters around us get rough and the waves threaten to swamp our little boats, we cry and wail in fear. We're sure that these waves will be the very things that destroy us. Over the wind and the waves, you call us to place our trust in you. And that's not so easy for us. We're so used to getting lots of reassurances and written guarantees of safety. But still, you call us out. Help us to take our focus off the wind and the waves. Help us place our gaze directly on you. Attune our hearts and our lives to hear your call and to respond in faith. Gracious God, for the ways we have dismissed your voice, ignored your nudges, to reach out in love, even while socially distancing. Lord, for the ways we have let you down by judging others and for not believing in ourselves and what we can do with the help of Christ, forgive us, Lord. We pray all of this in the name of Christ. Amen. My friends, don't be afraid. Jesus is with you all the time. You are healed. You are loved. You are forgiven. Come and live in the love of Christ Jesus. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Time for the children's moment. So if you're a child or a child at heart, come on up, come a little closer to the screen maybe, or better yet, if you're an adult, we wanna tell you a little bit about what the children already know, which is all the stuff we learned in Compassion Camp this last week. We're gonna zoom into a little bit of a day in the life of Compassion Camp this week. Over five nights, we gathered each night on Zoom. We appeared on the screens, all these little faces appeared on our screens and we shared together about compassion. Each of our themes each night took us down a different journey on compassion. The first night we talked about what compassion really is and how it's a, a mix of seeing each other and then feeling what other people feel by seeing them and then feeling it and then helping each other. We learned about empathy and we learned how we're called at the table to see each other, to engage in compassion. And then on the second night, we talked about how we have compassion for our neighbors. And here's my favorite part. We talked about how sometimes that's hard and sometimes it might even be scary to be compassionate, but that we can be brave enough to be compassionate. We learned a song and it was my favorite song all week and it said, We are brave enough to love. We are brave enough to show compassion. We are brave enough to listen. Tell 
which I love that sentiment, but we talked all about how we can be loving of our neighbor <laughs> by being brave and how compassion helps us be brave. And then in this big Zoom room on the third day, we talked about how you can be compassionate for yourself and that if you love yourself, that helps you love your neighbor, that God loves us and has compassion for us. And we can be compassionate for ourselves, for our bodies, for our minds, for our spirits. On the fourth day, we talked about how God accompanies with us all through being compassionate and helps us make decisions and is compassionate along the way with us. That was a fun night because it reminded us that whether you're face to face or far away, God is compassionate. And maybe we can even hear a little clip of what uh, the song that night sounded like as the Millers led us in face to face or far away. Face to face or far away, God is present among us. That's especially important to remember right now, isn't it? Because so many of us are far away, and of course our whole camp was led far away. But even though we were far away, we got to talk about our theme together, and then we got to hear a Bible story together. Every night the youth had created, uh, with the help and leadership of Debbie Williams, a whole video of our Bible stories. So each night we heard a Bible story. A Bible story that told us about how to be compassionate. We heard stories about people who were compassionate and about how God helps us be compassionate. And then on our last night, we talked about being compassionate to our earth and to creation. So we talked, we sang, and then we heard Bible stories all presented by our youth. And then we split up and we went into our cabins. And each night in your cabins, you got time to just color and hang out and talk to, to create things that would tell the story of compassion. And then you got to have time with one of our camp counselors, either Maggie Peel, who helped lead games and activities, or Kinsey Hine, who taught the kids about being having compassion in action with a craft or an activity or Sophie Williams, who helped lead our youth in, or our children in yoga. Time to move around and think about compassion in that way. And then after our breakout rooms and all the crafting fun, we came back together and we remembered the ways that we learned about compassion that day and the ways God is compassionate to each of us. I hope that you enjoyed this little peek into a day of the life of Compassion Camp, partly so you know how grateful we are for the leadership and participation of this congregation, and so that even if you couldn't participate, you could hear a little bit of the ways our children now know how to be compassionate and how we can live into God's compassionate care for the world. At the end of each night, we also put our hands on our hearts and on our heads to remember that compassion might be something we learn in our brains, but it's something we feel in our hearts. Or maybe it's something we feel in our hearts and then we use our brains to figure out how to help with. And we prayed. And so let's end this children's moment with one of those special compassion prayers. Let's pray. Loving spirit, loving spirit, you are active and alive. You are active and alive always moving and stirring within and around us, always moving and stirring within and around us. Please be an encouraging wind at our backs. Please be an encouraging wind at our backs, giving us open minds, giving us open minds and soft hearts and soft hearts to follow where you lead, to follow where you lead. Make us flexible and present in each moment Make us flexible and present in each moment that we might embrace compassion, that we might embrace compassion by letting go of what we expected, by letting go of what we expected. Amen. Hope you enjoyed a day in the life and we'll see you next time.
Guide us, O God, by your word and spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now the Old Testament reading today is from Psalm 105, verses 1 through 6, 16 through 22, and 45b. O give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength, seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles and the judgments he has uttered. O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. When he summoned famine against the land and broke every staff of bread, he had sent a man ahead of them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. His feet were hurt with fetters. His neck was put in a collar of iron until what he had said came to pass. The word of the Lord kept testing him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people set him free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions to instruct his officials at his pleasure and to teach his elders wisdom. Praise the Lord. Last week, we stood with Jesus as he learned the horrific news of his cousin John's murder. And we watched as he walked to the lakeshore and got into a boat and pushed out onto the lake in hopes perhaps of escaping to a quiet, deserted place. We saw his reaction to the crowds who were waiting for him on the other side of the lake. We saw his compassion, which was evident as he cured the sick and then fed more than 5,000 people with just five loaves and two fishes. Last week, we remembered this miracle and we considered that in Christ, we find compassion. We also find challenge and invitation to life and the possibilities in Christ. The final verse we heard last week was verse 21 of Matthew's 14th chapter. Now those who had eaten were about 5,000 men besides women and children. So let's pick up the story in verses 22 to 33 of Matthew's 14th chapter. Listen for the word of God. Immediately, he, Jesus, made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. And Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, and for the word of God within us. Thanks 
be to God. I wonder what you've noticed this week. Did you notice that the weather turned a bit cooler here in the greater Cincinnati area? A much welcomed relief from those 90s we experienced much of July. It caught me by surprise that first cool morning when I stepped outside and noticed that it was cooler outdoors than it was in the air-conditioned indoors. And oh, it was lovely to open the windows, even if only for a few hours every morning, and to feel that breeze blow through the house. Later this afternoon, our newly elected leaders will be sharing their faith statements during a combined meeting of elders and deacons. I've had the chance to preview their statements, and in reading them, I have been blessed to hear how they have noticed the presence of Christ through family members, through the church, in worship, and in life situations. It's nice to notice the change in weather. It's also really good to notice how our Lord Jesus shows up in our life. Many have heard Jesus referred to as Lord all of their lives through the language of the church, the sacraments, the prayers, the creeds, the hymns. We celebrate the Lord's Supper. We pray the Lord's Prayer. We confess to believing in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And we sing familiar hymns like Fairest Lord Jesus or Praise to the Lord the Almighty. But did you know, for those disciples of Jesus, up to this point in the Gospel of Matthew, they have not recognized or acknowledged that Jesus was, in fact, the Lord. Even though they, along with many other people at that time, had seen him teach and preach, heal the sick, even raise the dead, they had not connected the dots. So it's important for us to notice how Peter, struggling in the waves, refers to Jesus of Nazareth as Lord. Peter has that first profession of faith in the Gospel of Matthew. Lord, save me. What else did you notice in Matthew's telling of this story? I noticed what Jesus did as soon as, the, as he dismissed the disciples and said good night to those crowds. He headed up the mountain by himself to pray. And I wonder, is there someone uh, with whom you look forward to checking in at the end of the day, or maybe the first thing the next morning, or maybe you've got a friend you talk to, or a, a family member every week you check in with, someone with whom you share what's going on, the details of your day, the challenges, the unexpected joys, the disappointments, things you learned, have you ever thought of prayer as that kind of conversation? Not one in which you have to be careful about what words you use, but just a conversation to share what's on your mind. What made you laugh? What made you wonder? What provoked you to think differently? What annoyed you? And then you wait. And you listen to hear what Christ might say. That kind of time with God was important to Jesus. Hmm. Maybe that kind of prayer time ought to be important to us as well. Another thing I noticed, Jesus knew where the disciples were and he wanted to be with them. I find that incredibly encouraging and reassuring. After all, have you ever messed up with a friend and then were kind of sheepish to be back around them? Maybe you said something dumb or insensitive. Maybe like those disciples 
who rudely told Jesus to send the crowds away so they didn't have to be bothered with feeding this crowd of strangers. I imagine that by the time that miracle banquet was over and they were asked to pick up the baskets of leftovers, a dozen in all, they probably felt a little sheepish that they had let him down. And yet, just a few hours later, Jesus wants to be with them so badly that he finds them in the middle of the lake and walks on water to get to them. Do you believe Jesus wants to be with you so badly? Every day, even in the ordinary moments of your life, as well as in the scary hard times of life, I think that even when we mess up, even when we know we've disappointed him, Jesus still really wants to be with us. Some of you have been on a lake this summer. I know because I've seen your fun pictures on Facebook. The lake in this story is sometimes called the Sea of Galilee. Sometimes it's referred to as the Lake of Gennesaret. This lake in our story is about 64 square miles. So it's a bit larger than Norris Lake, but a bit smaller than Lake Cumberland. It's a good sized freshwater lake. And Jesus finds his disciples on the lake in the midst of a storm And they see him and are not surprisingly terrified and they cry out in fear. And Jesus calls to them, take heart. It is I, do not be afraid. Now there's a curious phrase, take heart. Some translations will read take courage and the Latin root for courage is Cur. So some wonder that perhaps Jesus is instructing his followers, including all of us, to reach down deep into your heart of faith, to lead, to live, to love courageously from your heart of faith. And I wonder what would our lives look like? What would our church leadership look like if we were grounded in courageous hearts of faith, not in hearts full of fear? And what are we to notice of the impetuous Peter? Matthew's gospel is the only one to include this detail of Peter's unusual request and then his actions. Lord, he says, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Scholars say that what is most striking in his words is the recognition that his request has no validity apart from the command of Jesus. Peter doesn't so much ask for supernatural powers as he asks to recognize that whatever Jesus commands, Jesus makes possible. Hear that, the commands of Jesus, if followed obediently, will create miracles. They open an incredible reservoir of divine resources. And apart from such commands, not much unusual is gonna happen. Life will be mundane and not very fruitful, but whatever Jesus commands, Jesus makes possible. And then Jesus invites Peter to come. And for a moment, Jesus leads from that courageous heart of faith and makes his way across the waves to Jesus. But as soon as he hears those strong winds, his mind takes over and his fears distract. And Peter stops leading from that heart of faith and his focus on Jesus dissolves, trust vanishes, and he begins to sink. I wonder, has that ever happened to you? 
Has God ever nudged you out of the boat? And for a while you flourish, but over time you forget to keep your eyes on Christ and you lose heart and your doubts take hold and you give up. I wonder, how tight are you with Jesus? Are you closely knit to your Lord? Or do you only remember to talk with him when you're feeling desperate? One of our new elders elect shared a memory of his grandmother. He said when he was young, she would listen to his complaints about life's troubles. And after patiently listening, she would ask, have you prayed about it yet? Which of course he would respond, well, no, because like all of us, usually we forget that we have a companion in life. Our attention and our focus on our companion Jesus fades as the ways of life toss us around and our fears take over and we lose sight of the Lord. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the fiercely courageous Lutheran pastor who lost his life in a German prisoner of war camp during World War II, reflected on this passage of scripture. He wrote, Peter had to leave the ship and risk his life on the sea in order to learn both his own weakness and the almighty power of his Lord. If Peter had not taken the risk, he would never have learned the meaning of faith. The road to faith passes through obedience to the call of Jesus. Unless a definite step is demanded, the call vanishes into thin air. And if people imagine that they can follow Jesus without taking the step, they are deluding themselves like fanatics. In his book, The Cost of Discipleship, Bonhoeffer wrote, faith is only real where, there's, where there is obedience, never without it. And faith only becomes faith in the act of obedience. I often wonder how my life would be different today if I had ignored that command I heard as I sat in my car in the dark parking lot of the Presbytery office back in August of 2018, the voice clearly said, do something, do something about homelessness. And at that moment, I was baffled. What am I going to do about homelessness? But if I had dismissed that command as foolhardy, which it certainly was at face value, I would never have followed that trail and event that eventually led to Peter Tremi and I would have not been called as pastor at Lakeside Presbyterian Church. By taking that risk, my faith was strengthened. And I wonder, have you ever taken a risk that changed your life? Have you ever felt Jesus call you out of the boat? I wonder what risks, what leaps of faith Christ might ask of us in the weeks and months ahead as followers and as the church. Bonhoeffer says if we don't take the risk, if we can't make that leap of faith, the call vanishes. The opportunity sinks back under the waves. Here at Lakeside, we were invited last Easter to take a leap of faith by stepping up to financially support the Northern Kentucky Community Action Commission. And just this week, we received an update. At the end of July, we have helped 66 families with rent and utilities and work essentials and have provided Head Start with cleaning kits. Our scripture teaches us that whatever Jesus commands, Jesus makes possible if 
we are faithful. Because of your leap of faith last Easter, many continue to be blessed. Hmm, so I wonder, what's the condition of your heart of faith, my friends? Are you on rocky seas? Or are you feeling courageous right now? Peter's time, both in the boat and out of the boat, paint a beautiful and real image of faith. Even as we believers struggle with doubt, as we walk and sink, as we trust and fear, it is Christ who is the constant. Christ stands beside us as people and as the church. Faith ebbs and flows just as the waves rise and fall. But Jesus stands by us always. So let me encourage you. Stay in touch, my friends. Talk to your friend, your Lord. I pray you discover that just by beginning that conversation, that plain talk with Christ, just by creating space for his presence to be felt, it will be like opening the window on a cool morning. You've created a possibility for the presence of God to breathe fresh life into your soul. Create that space, my friends. Invite Jesus to stand by you. And then wait and listen and be blessed. May it be so. Charles Tindley was born in 1851 to a mother who was free and to a father who was a slave. After the Civil War, he moved to Philadelphia. As a young man, he was self-taught, but when he went to Philadelphia, he sought out others who could teach him Hebrew and Greek, so that without any formal education, he qualified by examination to be ordained into the Methodist Episcopal Church. He became one of the most popular pastors and hymn writers of the time. Today, you will see one of his hymns, Stand By Me. It is sung and played by my dear friend and colleague, Craig Hella Johnson. He is the artistic conductor of the Cincinnati's Vocal Arts Ensemble, and he lives in Austin, Texas. He is one of the kindest people I know, and his soul shines like a beacon of light. I asked him if he would consider being a part of our service, and he said he was glad to be a small connect point to the Lakeside Church family. The lyrics will be on your screen, so please sing along with my friend Craig. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the world is tossing me like a ship upon the sea, thou who rulest wind and water, stand by me. Storms of life are raging, stand
as we turn our hearts and minds to prayer, I would lift you as always our prayer list. Nowadays, of course, that's not in a printed bulletin. It's in our news from church and includes a number of names and some details about how we are uh, being asked to pray for members of this congregation and friends of this congregation. If you have a prayer concern, please send it to us and let us know. We would love to be lifting your name in prayer or the name of a friend or loved one in prayer. And more than ever, we hope that everyone is engaging in their prayer life at home, using these lists or whatever other resources they have to uh, take time to pray to God. We're connected in so many ways, but prayer is certainly one of them. And so we turn now to God in prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Compassionate God, we are so grateful and have so many reasons to give you thanks. You are our rock and redeemer. You hold us tight and remind us we are loved and cared for. We are so in need of those reminders right now, God, because the storms of life are raging. The world is tossing us like ships upon the sea. So we call out and ask that you stand by us, Lord. Stand by us, O ruler of wind and water, and stand by your whole world. God of comfort and peace, stand by those in Beirut dealing with the aftermath and grief of an explosion. Stand by those in all places of conflict and violence. Stand by those mourning the loss of a loved one, those made ill by COVID or innumerable other diseases. Stand by those whose mental health can barely hold on much longer. Stand by those who are watching their resources, food, housing, health care, slipping through their fingers. God of resilience and strength, stand by us. Stand by the parent having to choose between childcare and a job. Stand by the teachers risking their lives or their life's callings. Stand by the children, missing milestones, missing developmental tools, missing friends, missing meals. God of patience and steadfast purpose, stand by us. Stand by the youth seeking independence and identity. Stand by the young adults at a loss for jobs or housing or direction. Stand by the ones revisioning their futures, the ones pivoting careers, reimagining, rescheduling, or feeling more stuck than ever. God, even as you stand by us, we know that you offer us the courage to step into troubled waters that you accompany us in the joys and challenges of newness and the joys and challenges that you've always stood by us through. Help us be brave enough to love, brave enough to try new things, brave enough to dig into our own faults or privileges, and brave enough to see and stand up for those who are unduly burdened. God, help open our eyes to the ways you stood by us and stand by us still. In the joys of anniversaries, in online compassion camps, in the beauty of late summer skies, in the calming presence of a friend. Oh God, we lift all of this in the name of the one who stood by us all the way to the cross. The one who taught us to pray together, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
All we have and all we are is a gift from God. Though our doors are closed, the ministries continue at Lakeside Presbyterian. I invite you to share however you're able, uh, with a check mailed to church or by clicking the donate online button on our website and choosing the general fund option in the drop down menu or by holding this faith community in prayer. All will be appreciated. Let us pray. Gracious God, you call us to let go of the things we cling to and step out in faith, trusting in your love and provision. Give us courage to step out boldly and sufficient faith to follow without fear. Take our lives and our gifts. Use them to accomplish more than we could possibly imagine so that through us your kingdom might come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Now, how shall we disciples go out into this world? Go forth in the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to what is good. Return to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit that is in you, that is beside you, walking with you. And may the blessing of God, Creator, Son, and Spirit be with you this day and all the days ahead. Amen. <music>